Good morning, Park Windsor Baptist Church, church family. It's a beautiful and wonderful day that we are here today, that we are, Sister Taylor and I are here to just to wish all of you a happy and wonderful Thanksgiving. We pray that you have a safe and wonderful time in the Lord with your family. I know these are very difficult days and different, uh, different times in which we can gather together as family for Thanksgiving. But this morning, Sister Taylor and I would like to just to wish all of you again, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Sister Taylor, have anything? Uh, definitely. Good. We like to wish everyone a nice Thanksgiving. Uh, have a great time with your family. And we are truly blessed for this day. So enjoy your day. Amen. Praise be to God. I wanted to gather together just to say to all of our senior members of our congregation, and to our youth, our young adults, to our babies, to our officers, to our deacons, deaconesses, to our trustees, to all of our department head leaders, and even to you, uh, our visitors who uh, oftentimes uh, check in with us on our live stream. Uh, we're grateful to God for that, and we just wanted to say happy Thanksgiving to you, and then give uh, just a brief message of love and compassion for all of you uh, today as you gather together with your family. Amen? At uh, this time, I'm going to have uh, Sister Taylor. She's going to read uh, a passage of scripture from Psalms uh, 100, verses 1 through 9 for us, and then we'll go from there. Amen. Okay, Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise, shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. Yeah. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy and divine word. Amen. Thank you, Sister Taylor, for that beautiful, wonderful psalms. Psalms 100 is a beautiful uh, uh, scripture, uh, a psalm that we want to share with you this morning in our home. Amen. Uh, Sister Taylor and I are on our couch and uh, just relaxing, having a good time before we, like you, before we uh, eat our meal and everything else. We just wanted to share a word to you. I just want to give a Thanksgiving uh, message and a word of encouragement to you this morning before you sit down with your family, uh, you're going to gather together, shake uh, hands, hold hands, rather. We can't do that like we used to. So now, like you, your family and my family, what we're going to do uh, is that we're going to have a Zoom time where we can gather together, pray together, give God's thanks for his praise and mercy for all that he has done. And I know I speak on behalf of our officers as well as our youth and young adult minister, Reverend Bolden, Reverend Brown, uh, to Reverend Snipes and Ross, to all of our leaders of our church, amen. We just want to let you know that even though things may not be the way that we would like them to be uh, during this pandemic, amen, and we're not able to be together, uh, we're still together. The Bible clearly tells us where there are two or three, Sister Taylor, gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. And so no matter where you are, you may, your family may be in Chicago or like my, some of my family members are up north or there in Vegas and Detroit, God is still there. His Amen. very presence is there. And so we just want to just share that love with you today and to remind all of our members of Park Windsor Baptist Church how much we really do appreciate you and love you. I know many of you are hurting right now. Some of you have just recently lost loved ones. And my condolences to all of our members and visitors and friends who have lost loved ones. Uh, uh, there won't be that person, that father, that mother, that brother that we normally would see there at the table gathering together, giving thanks. But I just want you to know that God is still there 
giving comfort and strength to those who are going through a very difficult time right now. I want you to lift up your heads. I want you to, to just to lean on the Lord and just depend on him and just know that God is with you. His word is clear. He said, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And to all of those out there, just know that Sister Taylor and I feel your pain and understand your hurt. Amen. And just know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. And so what word can I give you today on this Thanksgiving, beautiful, wonderful Thanksgiving day? What can, word can I give? And it is this. One, in Psalms 100, as Sister Taylor has read for us in our hearing, it's a psalm of thanksgiving and praise that David had. And the first thing I want to share with you on this Thanksgiving message is this. It's in verse 4 of Psalms 100. And that is, every day we are invited to give thanks to God. Amen. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's the invitation. The invitation to everyone, to every family member, to every friend that you encounter, every one of us have been invited to give thanks. It tells us to go into his presence or to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. And so we give thanks to God. We are grateful to God that God invites us to come and to be in his presence and to give thanks to him at that dinner table, amen, and while you're chatting and, and, and on Zoom and everything, the Lord is with you. And so he invites us to come. He not only invites us to be thankful, but he also invites us when that decision comes, when we have to make a decision to accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Would you agree with that, Sister Taylor? Amen. Amen. And so our message is that God, every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it doesn't have to be just on Thanksgiving. But as the song says, every day is a day of thanksgiving. thanksgiving. God has been so good to us. Isn't that true? That God has been good to us each and every day, put food on our table, clothes on our backs, wonderful families and friends, just to have a reasonable portion of health and strength. It's enough to be grateful and thankful for. And so we thank God for the invitation that not just on Thanksgiving Day, but every day he invites us to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. Then another thing I saw in this text, it's in verse 5. And that is, I asked myself the question, Sister Taylor, and that was this. What motivated David to give thanks? What motivated David to give thanks? And I noticed in verse 5, it was because of God's love. God loved him, and he loved God. God's love is amazing. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that we would not perish but have everlasting life. God is love, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth because God is love. God wants us to love each other unconditionally. So David's motivation for, for saying, thank you, Lord, was because of God's love for him. My question is, what motivates you to give thanks? It should be his love. Amen. Because God's love look beyond all of your faults. And it sought your every need. Thank you, Lord. And we have something to thank God and praise God for, for his love and his mercy. And that's the second thing in the text. It says, for God's love and God's mercy. God has been merciful to us. There's things that we should have been guilty for or punished for. But God, because of God's grace and because of his mercy and his compassion and his kindness toward us. Amen. David was grateful for God's love and he was grateful for God's mercy because mercy suits all of our case. 
when we look at our lives and we, we travel down this journey, there are sins of omission, there are sins of commission, things that we have done that we need God's forgiveness. We need God's mercy and compassion. We live in a world where there's just so much hatred. We live in a world where there's so much division. We live in a world where there's so much racism. We live in a world where there's the have and the have nots. But we know that God is merciful and kind. And so today, like David, we say thank you, Lord, because of your love. Amen. We say thank you, Lord, because of your mercy. And then here's another thing. We thank God because of his faithfulness. Great is God's faithfulness. Every morning, new mercy, I see, you see. God is faithful to us every day. He allowed us to, to rise this morning to worship him in spirit and in truth, to give us another day, to get it right, to walk with him, to talk with him. Amen. And so today, God has been faithful. He shines on the just as well as the unjust. He's just a faithful God. And so, Lord, we say thank you for your love. Yes. Thank you for your mercy and thank you for your faithfulness yes. toward us. Amen. But then here's the final thing that I want to share with you. As you get ready to sit down with your family and gather together and reminisce of the good, good times and everything, God has been good even in the midst of this pandemic. And I ask myself this, Sister Taylor, and that is this. Why should I celebrate Thanksgiving? And how can I celebrate Thanksgiving? What did David do to celebrate Thanksgiving? In the midst of all of the chaos, in the midst of all the confusion, in the midst of all that's happening with us from the beginning of March to this very present time, we can't gather together. We can't do the things that we normally do. We can't hug other family members like we want to, like we hug each other, Sister Taylor. Right. But here's the thing. In this text, in verses 1 through 3, it says that David made a joyful noise unto the Lord. So on Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving, we can, we can give God's thanks and celebrate Thanksgiving by our shouting of joy. Amen. We may not have everything we want, but we do have joy. The songwriter says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and it can't take it away. Yes, we can have joy in the midst of trials. We can have joy in the midst of trials and tribulation, even in the midst of the pandemic, even in the midst of racial divide. We can have joy. Amen. Because why? God is joy. And so we can celebrate today. Celebrate with your family. That's joyfulness. Celebrate with your friends. That's joyfulness. And so we celebrate today and we give God praise and God glory for the joy that he's put in our hearts by the service we render. Serve the Lord with gladness. Many are right now, right now, some of the members of our congregation, many of those who are with Faith in Christ Ministry who we support, amen. We want to thank Faith Christ in Ministry and many other, many other, other ministries and churches are all right out right now. Many of some of the uh, uh, churches and, and, and fraternities and sororities are out there helping those who are less fortunate, feeding those who could who don't have any food like you and I. Whatever little bit we have, all we know that little bit becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. Amen. And so we take what God has given us. And we thank it and we bless it. Amen. Like the little lad, he only had just, just a little bit, but God multiplied it. And God can multiply your blessing. God can multiply your good. And so right now, 
We serve the Lord with gladness. We serve him as ministers and, and, and pastors and, and deacons and trustees and members of our congregation. We serve our community right now who needs us out. Sitting right now in lines trying to just get some food. And so it's a time to serve. Yes, it's okay to receive, but it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. And so we, we pray for those who are less fortunate than we are. So, so how can we serve the Lord? We serve the Lord with our shouting and praising and giving thanks. And we serve the Lord by serving with gladness. You ought to be grateful and want to serve others and to help others and to lift up those who are downtrodden. And so this Thanksgiving message is about God inviting us to give thanks. It's about us. What is our motivation to give thanks? Because of his love and his mercy and his, and his faithfulness. And yes, why do we celebrate? And how can we celebrate? With shouts of joy, with singing. And then serve the Lord with gladness. Keep serving him and keep reaching out to those that are less fortunate than we are. Yes, the songwriter does say, it says, every day is a day, day of, of thanksgiving. thanksgiving. <laughs> Sister Taylor, God has been so good to us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He has made a way out of no way. And not many, many of you can testify to that. To Park Windsor, Sister Taylor and I say thank you for your love that you've shared toward us, the gifts that you've given to us, and we give those gifts of love and compassion back to you. Have a beautiful and wonderful Thanksgiving. I know many of you have prayer requests. I know many of you are hurting right now. And Sister Taylor and I, we want to pray for you. We want to thank you for tuning in for our live stream this morning on our Facebook. We want to say how much we uh, love you. We miss you. We're not able to gather together in the church. And to every pastor and every church that is doing the same, we say to God be the glory. Amen. Hold on to God's unchanging hand and don't quit. And remember this, church family and friends, the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to them that endure to the end. Endure, persevere, don't quit, and don't give up. And thank God for everything that he has done for you. I'm getting ready to pray for you. I'm getting ready to pray that God give you victory. I'm getting, pray, getting ready to pray that God will heal your body. I'm getting ready to pray that God will sustain you and keep you and bless you and give you favor for healing and for comfort of spirit. That's what we want to do today. And so as I hold Sister Taylor's hand and you hold your family hand together and as you social distance together, and I know these are very difficult times, but I, I, I encourage all of you not to be in large groups. Protect yourself and protect your family. Love each other, care for each other. Okay? Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for your word of thanksgiving, of a message of invitation for us to give you thanks. We thank you, Lord God, that we have a reason and a motivation to give thanks because of your love, because of your mercy, and because of your kindness, because of your faithfulness. And because of that, Lord God, we're going to give you shouts of joy. Yes, Lord. Because of that, Lord God, because you have been so good to us. We don't want to be selfish, Lord, but we want to serve you with gladness. And so, Lord God, we lift up every member of our congregation, every visitor that is listening right now, to every senior, those who are in convalescent home, those who are on their beds of affliction, those, oh God, who are dealing with pre-existing illness and sickness, and even those right now 
who have lost loved ones. In the past couple of, of, of days, oh God, we have, we have some of our members who have lost loved ones. Yes. And we lift all of them up to you right now. Let them know, O oh God, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. Let them know, Lord God, that you will never leave them, nor will you forsake them. But you're with them every step of the way. We thank you for every one of those who, who have, from the beginning of this year to even to this very present time, O oh Lord. We lift up those who have lost love on those who they could not hold or, or couldn't have the kind of homegoing service that they normally would have. And even now, O oh God, with the hurt and pain, O oh God, you said that you would take the pain away, the hurt away. And we ask, O oh God, that you would give healing and deliverance right now to many of those who had to bury a loved one but couldn't do the things that they normally do. And we give comfort to them. We lift them up. We lift up our young adults and every, every, every married couple, every, all of our youth and all of our children to you right now. Yes. And as we gather together today, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you. For every cluster of bread and every food on our table, clothes on our backs, we say thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us, even when we didn't care for ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, for everything that we have done. Forgive us, Lord. We are mindful, Lord God, of all of those who are less fortunate right now. Many of them have never experienced what they're going through before, ever in their lives, what's going on right now. We pray that you lift up their heads right now and let them know, oh God, that you are there and that you love them, that you care for them. Yes. We thank you for our officers of our church. Thank you. We thank you for our chairman and his, and his family, our, our, all of our deacons, our deaconess, our trustees, our youth, our young adults, our babies. We lift them up to you right now. All of our ministries right now. So bless us and Give us comfort of spirit. And Lord God, we're not, we're not, we're not so proud to, to, just to just to let you know how much we love you and how much we care about you because you careth for us. We lift up our country to you. We yes. lift up our newly elected president and vice president to you right now. Mm -hmm. We lift up our country. We lift up our past president. Even though he's the president right now, we still lift up. 45 to you, Donald Trump to you. Pray for his family as well. And Lord, we say thank you now. Thank you, Lord. And we appreciate all that you have done. And we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Again, have a beautiful and wonderful, blessed Thanksgiving. And to God, be the, the glory. glory. God bless you, Park Wednesday. God bless Have you. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Enjoy your meals today. <laughs> Be blessed. Amen. <laughs>